Welcome back everybody. On the first video we built the frame, we mount our uh, gearbox and our stepper motor. On this video I'm going to build a plate for our chuck, wire it up and run some tests. And also I'm going to build enclosure to make sure this is all covered. Now for my 16 chuck I really want to use cast iron for back plate. So if you guys promise not to yell at me and call me names, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for back plate. I'm going to try and use these cast iron weights. When it comes to machining board, this is no-no. And if this thing was for lathe with higher RPM, I wouldn't even try it. Because sometimes these guys, they have a hot spot or cavity and they are not meant for this kind of operation. But I'm going to take a gamble, try it. If it turns out good, we'll do it. If not, I'll come up with a different solution. All right, let's do this. Oh, this very nice dense piece of cast iron, no hot spot, no decay or sand patch. Right. Perfect fit. All right, as you all saw, this thing machined perfectly and uh, no hot spot, no cavity, and it turns out perfect. Uh, I've finished this side, but I have left few tau on this step. Once I have this assembled, I'm gonna put this on mill, dial it in, and try to take that few extra tau here. So in case if there is any kind of uh, in center issue, that will solve it. It has seven bolts and also there's a little uh, dowel pin which uh, I will uh, install that later on. Okay, just didn't want to bore you guys with the enclosure so off camera I went ahead and made this enclosure for the back and the plate for top. Uh, for that, simply I, I, I got this uh, six by six uh, aluminum square and uh, just uh, capped one end and then made four uh, mounting bolts there. Okay. Oh, you didn't think I just made this boring plate, did you? Now, oh, something nicer. Voila. Okay. 
all put together and ready for test. Looking good so far. Let's see if it works. Okay, as far as the wiring goes, it's pretty simple. Uh, we have our power coming to our driver and then power going back to our uh, stepper motor from here. And this is encoder cable. All you have to do, follow your uh, manual. They're pretty much pretty standard when it comes to these drivers. Plug that in. Got our steps and direction coming from our breakout board. Now I've set this on eight time micro stepping. So that means it will take 1600 pulse for stepper motor to do one full turn. But we have a 50 to one ratio gearbox. So we have to do some math and figure out what do we need to input in the Mach 4. Take your uh, micro stepping value and time that to your uh, gearbox ratio. In my case, I have a 50 to one gearbox ratio, so we get 1600 times uh, uh, 50, that give us 80,000. Then you take that 80,000, divide that by 360 degree. So divide that by 360, so it gives me 222.22 pulse. That means I will input that uh, into my mock software. Again, I'm not sure how precise that 50 to 1 ratio is. So once I get rough, rough idea, I can definitely go back and fine tune it. Let me put that in and see if this thing turns. Okay, all system is go. We're gonna do our first test. While I was at it, I also uh, went ahead and made this voice activated. So let's try this. Okay, four taxes. Dispense one shot of maple syrup. A little bit off, but it works. Quick disclaimer, no food was wasted in this test. I'll be, this is my daily dose of maple syrup. Now I'm going to try to test this for any backlash. Now, I don't know how exactly to do this, so I have set up my dial indicator on this uh, magnet, and dial indicator has uh, it, its uh, 5 tenths uh, resolution, so I'm gonna try to move it back and forth while it's preloaded, see if I get any uh, different type of reading. So I'm gonna zero this up here, and then simply I'm going to turn uh, the wheel back and forth, see what we get. Keep in mind, there is no load on this and I see no backlash. So I can go two tenths back and back and forth or other way around. Let's see if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. With no load, that looks pretty good to me. So we'll know how it is once we have real job or real piece of work on it. Okay, I'm also gonna run quick MDI command that will do a few movement and then come back to zero. See how precise that is. Wow, that's pretty darn good. Okay, at this point I'm gonna mount this on the table and try to machine that extra step for a uh, chalk and hopefully run the first test. I have a bolted down and dialed in. I'm just gonna run 3.8 end mill uh, and take that few tau so it will fit 
to our chalk. I wish I had a bigger micrometer. And that's a perfect fit. And as far as concentricity goes, I'm only getting between a tau, which uh, with the chalk in this price point, it is acceptable. And as far as speed goes, uh, this is what I've achieved so far. So this is basically a rapid move. Pretty good. For work offset, I've set center of this part to my X, Y, and Z, zero. Okay, for test part, I have no particular part. I just put something together and uh, this is uh, 2.97 inches in diameter and I'm just gonna machine a few uh, features here and see how this thing handles it. Wish me luck, let's do it. I'm gonna use 3.8 carbide, two fluid animal. Uh, we're running at 10,000 RPM and roughly around 64 inches per minute feed rate.
I could have used smaller anvil to make it a little bit less vibration. Other than that, it looks great. One thing I couldn't figure it out, every time it does a pocket, it goes back uh, to uh, Z Home. So I, I looked at Fusion 360, I couldn't find an option how to stop that. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be with the fourth axis. So if someone out there knows how to fix that, please do let me know. Uh, all I have left, I'm gonna try to see if we can do a small chamfer on this. That's one big chamfer, we don't want that. Let me fix it up. Okay, other than this huge chamfer, everything went very smoothly. And uh, there's a lot of program optimization that has to be done, especially on my chamfer toolpad. And uh, Z-axis going back to zero every time it does this pocket. I'm assuming it's a safety uh, feature in the Fusion 360, but I will look into that. If someone has any tips and tricks, please do let me know. Other than that, we have this uh, cool part with no use for it. Thank you for watching.